Hi there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out the UK. Welcome to my channel. Like, subscribe, share. Um, yeah, um, a few weeks ago, um, I did this video um, about the golden visa. I'm sure many of you will remember it. And it's almost like I predicted what I'm about to tell you um, with regard to um, them not really checking the systems and people it's just a way for the rich people to come into the country without too much oversight anyway i'm reading the telegraph today and um, what did i come across um i have to read it sorry about this this isn't this isn't something i can um do ad lib okay so it's basically Russian and Chinese millionaires can buy access to British passports by exploiting a flawed home office scheme, fast tracking the super rich, an investigation has revealed. Legal and financial advisors were filmed boasting about their role in securing scores of golden visas for millionaire foreign clients and offering to omit sensitive details from immigration officials oh and also somebody also sent me a link about this okay such as links to the inner circle of the russian president vladimir putin and to the chinese military that sounds like some serious stuff the advisors told an undercover reporter that they had held helped secure golden visas for a member of the gaddafi family the son of a corrupt Thai government minister, an Egyptian charged with corruption, an Eritrean with possible links to the military deals in Angola, and millionaires from Iran and Iraq whose businesses were affected by sanctions. One said it was easy peasy to get it around the Home Office anti corruption checks, alleging that the officials who did the betting were untrained school leavers who used Google searches. Thing is, is that when you think that just because you've got some dosh, you can, they just assume that you are a good guy. All these little people who are coming in with, without, with the, you know, with a basic amount, they're penalised, they're scrutinised. And yet you've got the biggest, you know, un, ah, uh, these people are talking about millions and billions that they're, they're kind of coming in with. And they're doing it just like, as I said, easy peasy. No checks or minimal checks. And what they do, they outsource this information. So nobody's checking anything. They just think, oh, well, we've handed it over to this agency. They can do it. Anyway, I'm not going to repeat what I said before in another video. So I'm just going to read this new information. It came out just a couple of days ago. Um, some boasted of near perfect records in helping clients through the process. And they get 25 grand for doing this, these agencies. Secret filming of the Sunday Times and Channel 4's dispatches exposed how the Home Office conducts scant checks on wealthy foreigners who stump up two million to obtain citizenship through UK's Golden Visa Scheme, otherwise known as Tier 1. The revelations will place pressure on Savid Javid, the Home Secretary, to scrap off or clean up the Golden Visa regime after so many have gone through. Well, so many have gone through, haven't they? What's the point of scrapping it up and looking at it now? It doesn't make any sense. Um, his department briefly suspended the scheme in December amid concern, amid concern that it was being abused by organised crime gangs and money launderers. But that later did a U-turn. Sources say Treasury demanded that it was reinstated. Yesterday, Dame... Margaret Hodge MP, the former chairwoman of the Public Account Select Committee, called for the scheme to be immediately suspended pending a um, parliamentary inquiry and an audit of all past applicants. She said it is scandalous how the hostile environment is treating asylum seekers in my constituency in a terrible way, yet we are welcoming 
and with open arms dirty money into Britain. We will never sustain economic prosperity on the back of dirty money. The thing is, is that I, they're not looking for economic prosperity. The thing is with a lot of government officials is that they are very selfish. They think about themselves and all they think about is the money that they're accumulating for themselves and the rest of the team. You know, they really don't think, oh, well, how it's going to affect the wider economy at the time. They're just thinking, oh, yeah, we're getting this money and it looks good on the books. And will it look good on the books when they do this check? It'd be very interesting. The scheme which requires a minimum of two million investment in a UK company has admitted more than 11,000 foreign nationals since it was set up in 2008. And this is a country who's trying to reduce foreign nationals. Officially called the Tier 1 Investor Visa, the scheme gives wealthy foreigners the right to live in the UK and a chance to later apply for full citizenship and a passport for two million. Unlike other nations, the UK does not ask visa applicants to pay any of the two million sum to the government or stipulate what the money should create, British jobs or boost areas of deprivation. So there's no criteria, no expectation when they give this two million. I think in Canada they have to... Um, make sure that they offer jobs. I thought they had to hear as well, but it looks like they don't anymore. It does stop investors taking the money back. It, no, it does not stop investors taking the money back offshore after they have secured the right to live permanently in Britain. So what can happen is they, they dump the two million over here, they leave it for five years, they get their um, citizenship, whatever, they then decide to go back to the country and they take their clean five, their clean two million back with them. We don't know what the source is, but according to this, it's dirty money. It has it's money laundering. That's what it's saying. According to this, they bring it over here dirty, get it get it cleaned. After five years, they take it out clean. Once you get indefinite leave to remain, Alex Wade of the visa experts Knightbridge Wealth in London told our reporter, at that stage you can move it and we would always tell you, even if you want to keep it with us, you move it offshore because you then don't have to pay tax on it. So this is the advice that these agencies are giving them. The newspaper and Channel 4 approached six firms with expertise in investor visas during a three-month investigation. Our reporter posed as a Hong Kong-based executive tasked with securing residency in the UK for members of his family in Russia and China. He told the firms one relative had been moving money offshore for Putin's inner circle and the other ran a technology company providing parts for weapons used by China's People Liberation Army. So this person that they sent undercover, I mean, look at the information that they're giving these agencies. And yes, it was a setup, but these are the kind of things they were telling these agencies and the agencies were still proceeding with the golden visa. So, you know, they're talking about they're trying to protect us from criminals and from all kinds of national security. But yet, look what they're doing. Under the guise of, oh, yeah, we got two million. This is what's happening. None of the firms seemed concerned that the executive was proposing to hide the family backgrounds from the Home Office. And he was advised there was no need to divulge the full story. This appeared to contravene Home Office rules, which requires visa applicants to flag up anything that calls, that calls their good character into question and to declare any activities on behalf of a foreign government that might harm British interests or national security. Well, they ain't been doing that because you know why? These agencies that they recruit and outsource to, they get 25 grand per person. 
For every deal, for every passport, 25 grand. Some of them get 10 grand, depending on what they have to do. But there was one of those agencies, they get 25 grand. Some of these advisors claim the government had, in effect, passed on to the banks and investment firms the responsibility for checking the visa applicants. So the Home Office doesn't, is not even bothering to check. They're just outsourcing it to all, you know, out to agencies, to banks. How can they have any oversight when they're outsourcing? On such on something that is so I mean it's such an expensive it just shows you that the, the perception that because these people are rich they are okay and they and they need minimal oversight and scrutiny that's what this is really saying we can get school leavers to deal with these applications because these are millionaires we don't have to worry about them that's the that's the assumption and we can ask the banks to sort out, you know, their bank accounts and stuff. We don't have to worry about that because these are millionaires. But look what their complacency and their lack of professionalism has done. The weekend, this weekend, all the firms said that these were just initial meetings and all the firms would have carried out due diligence checks as required by the regulators before deciding whether to proceed. A Home Office spokesperson said its substantially reformed system had some of the most rigorous checks in place for investor visas across the world across the world the home office said it yeah the two men in open shirts and slick business jackets were in earnest conversation at a corner table of the savoy hotel's american bar discussing a rather sensitive issue alexander wade the founder of knightsbridge wealth was listening intently to the hong kong executive who was seeking his help to obtain a tier one investor visa, known as the golden visa, that would allow his rich Russian uncle to gain residency in Britain. During the Telegraph's three month investigation, they approached four firms with years of expertise in inter investor visas, Knightsbridge Wealth, Westkin Associates, Quastels and Fragomen posing as Hong Kong-based executives. A man called Kuya Huang, who was attempting to secure residency. I read that. Anyway, in each case, the undercover reporter made it plain that his family had sensitive political and business connections and thus sought to hide the full picture underlying their wealth, contrary to what is required under the investor scheme. In an initial call to Wade, the latter made it clear that it would not be necessary to give a full picture of the undercover reporter's family member's financial background. He said, I'm used to working with people who can't divulge everything and we'll find a way around it, he said. He had obtained visas for several controversial clients, including a member of the Gaddafi family and one from Eritrea. But it was actually worse than, than that. It's an Eritrea living in Dubai. The British are very suspicious of Dubai as a country that helps money laundering. So there was an Eritrea, Eritrean living in Dubai, but all the business, all the money comes from their businesses in Angola. So that was really interesting one. And Angola is just arms. Don't know what that means. Mayer was also accommodating when the reporter told him he desired discretion. As head of Westkin's business immigration department, he had completed 15 to 20 investor visa applications and charges £10,000 for the service. So, um, he later agreed that the reporter could create documentation around the sale of a property or a piece of art to make it look as if the two million had come from that. 
He cautioned the reporter that he would probably not want to disclose that information to whoever was processing the case, but said it would be fine if documents suggested it and had been bought and sold for a fair price. Mayor was quick to suggest an easy way around the problem. All the uncle had to do was sell a property and the sale could be used to show the Home Office that the source of the two million investment for the visa had been legitimate. We send government the bare minimum, which is the sale of the asset. I'm not going to read much more of this. I think I think you've probably got the gist of it. Just going to read a couple more paragraphs. It was a common theme in the meetings that the advisers didn't expect the Home Office to carry out thorough checks on the information they were given. The single most important act in obtaining the visa, said the advisor, said the advisers, was to set up a bank account in the UK, as financial institutions are legally obliged to do due diligence on new clients. The Home Office had tightened up the rules in 2015 to make it mandatory that all investor visa applicants have a UK bank account. The scheme effectively transfers the responsibility for carrying out due diligence to those who stood to gain financially from taking on clients, which is the agencies. Indeed, our investigation discovered the checks were often done by small investment firms that had a vested interest in giving a bank account to new millionaire clients. The advisors seemed to prefer these firms to bigger, high street banks because they were more understanding of clients with controversial backgrounds or did not require such a big financial commitment. Tanya Laidlaw didn't think dealings with Vladimir Putin cronies could be a problem. In a preliminary meeting with Tanya Laidlow, the head of the immigration department at the law firm Castells, the undercover reporter was told she had dealt with many cases where banks said, no, we will not touch. And the smaller companies have said, yes, we'll be creative. She said the bigger banks would not deal with people with Russian or Chinese connections, but smaller ones that still have appetite would look. Later, she said, I personally haven't had any of my clients refuse to open up a bank account in all establishments. If one is saying no, then another one is saying yes. It was not a problem that our reporter Russian's uncle had helped Putin's cronies take the money offshore. If there's no adverse publicity, I don't think there should be, said Laidlaw. Many people who applied in the past didn't have such a clean past, I must say. Not necessarily with me, but with everyone. So I personally think it is worth trying to open a bank account. Once a bank account is open, that's more or less you're in, she said. She added that her firm would need to conduct its own due diligence before proceeding and emphasised her regulatory obligations. I think that's about enough. Um, I just want to read this last bit that I put in red for some reason. The Home Office does require applicants for golden visas to show evidence going back two years to verify the source of the two million they agreed to invest in the UK, but its rules are widely drawn. Applicants are able to say they acquired the money through a gift or a windfall, which could be the sale of an artwork or a lottery win. And you see the irony with that, because um, the other people who come in, like well, not say the students, but other immigrants who come on the tier two, tier three, T four visa, they have to justify and show them all the details. They can't say they got the money as a gift. They have to follow that trail back. They don't have to do it with the rich. If he if he happened to have bought that picture two years ago for ten thousand and it happens to have changed in value a lot to two million that's legitimate so they're saying inflation it could have he could have bought the painting for ten thousand but by now it's worth two million Wade told the reporter while describing this example as silly 
He said it would help the reporter put together a story that makes sense to explain where the cash had come from. He said he would need evidence, but not documentary evidence. When you apply, there is a requirement that you show other source of funds or have held the cash for two years. So that's the issue we need to get around. There are creative ways around it. Wade introduced a reporter to Sanjeev Chopra of Tuxima, a London investment firm that caters for Golden Visa clients. The firm would open a bank account for a Russian uncle and manage his money for a fee of 30000 a year. This would be split with Wade, who charges 20000 per applicant. And I'm going to stop there. Oh, I have to read this bit. In the meeting, Chopra said the firm would carry out due diligence, but the checks would be neither micro-level nor forensic. He was happy as long as the story of how the uncle made the money added up and made sense and any information corroborated it. He seemed amazed that the Home Office relied on his firm and Wade to do the checking. It's incredible. So they place all of the onus and emphasis on us as regulated advisors, removing themselves from all responsibility. It was clear that the Home Office would not be told everything. Our reporter also sketched out a second-hand scenario in which he was attempting to obtain a visa for another uncle, this time a wealthy Chinese businessman. Oh, I could go on forever with that. I mean, but you get the picture. It's just absolutely ridiculous. One rule for one, another rule for another. It's always the way the poor always get the hard, you know, the hard life and... The rich always get the easy life. So if I came up with two million, not that I need a visa, but it just shows you, you can have a few quid, you can do anything. Well, they do say money talks, don't they? And that's all for now. Bye-bye.